Hi, Elaine here. Today, I'll be sharing how you can easily create elastic planner bands for your digital planners. I'm using the same file that I've been using in recent videos. And because of that, the first thing to do is to lose the clasp. The clasp being a closing mechanism, but this time we're using elastic to close the planner. First thing we're going to need is a gradient. So I'm going to get a disposable shape. This isn't the actual finished elastic. The reason for that will become apparent. Having got the shape, next step, use the gradient tool. So select the gradient tool and drag from the top to the bottom. Initially, you have two gradient points, one at the top, one at the bottom. You can also see the halfway point and clicking on that allows you to create additional gradient points. Now, elastic looks ribbed, so we're definitely going to need more than two or three points. So I'm clicking to add an extra one in the middle that adds two more halfway points between the first gradient point, the second and then the second and the third. So I'm going to add extra points there. That gives me five, but I actually need a lot more than that. So I'm adding six and seven and eight and nine. Each time I do this, I get another halfway point for 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. And I happen to know 17 works rather well. Luckily, we're not going to need 17 different colours. We're only going to need two different colours. And I'm going to make those colours global colours. So across to my swatches panel and we have the option to add the current colour to the palette as a global colour. Then I'm going to name that. So I'm going to rename that and that I'm just going to call dark. I'm not going to say it's purple because it won't be purple forever. And I need to add another one. Now, a second way to add a global colour is to click at the top and say add global colour. This time you get to specify what that colour actually is. And this is going to be the light colour. And it needs to be lighter than that dark purple. So let's make it a pinky colour and add it there. And they are now in my document palette, which is where global colours live. Next step is to apply these colours alternating between the dark and the light. So initially I want the dark one. The third one would be dark. So all of the odd numbers are going to be dark. It's easy to make a mistake, so do slow down and count out as you go. Alternatively, what you could do is you could, instead of applying all of the dark ones first, like I'm doing, you could alternate and apply the dark one followed by the light one. Might be a little bit easier, but I'm going to keep going and do it this way. Then I'm going to go back and the even numbers, so two and four and so forth, I'm going to apply the light colour to it. And at that point, we have our gradient. It's not looking much like elastic, but it will do. The next step is to add that to the document palette. I've switched back to the move tool, so I've selected the shape. Then across to the swatches, I can't add it as a global colour, but I can add it as a fill and add that in. And you can see it says document at the bottom. The reason it says document, it automatically uses the name of the palette. Now, in this case, I'm going to rename that. Uh, that's going to be elastic and it's purple. Now, I'm not going to use the shape that I've already got there as the elastic. I'm going to toggle the view of that off and I'm going to add a new shape for the elastic, which will be over here. The way Affinity Publisher works, it always uses previous fill when you make a new shape, which is great, but it's not looking right. So what I need to do is grab the gradient tool and instead of having the gradient running top to bottom, instead I need to draw it across from the left hand side to the right hand side. And at that point, I have what looks like elastic holding the cover of that planner in place. Now I'll show you why I used what I called a disposable shape to create this. 
So let's hide the actual elastic and go back to the gradient. This gradient that I created took a few seconds to create, maybe a minute or so, because there were so many points on it. But I used global colours, just called dark and light. Once I'd created the gradient, I added it to a document palette, which means I don't really need this shape anymore, unless I want to edit that. You cannot edit a gradient straight in the swatches panel. But what I'm going to do, instead of deleting it, because I've now got that gradient saved, what I'm going to do is go into my dark colour and edit the fill. So let's say we wanted something greener. Now, this is the dark green, so I want to make this as dark as possible. So let's get the right tone of green and there's a dark green. And it means that by changing the global colour, I can quickly create another gradient without having to add all of those points, all 17 of them. So editing the light colour. So we want this to complement the green, but to be much lighter than that green. That looks fine. It's not changed the colour of the elastic that we already have because that was using colour we added to the document palette. It does mean we can go back to the disposable shape and then add that as another fill. So moving down, that's now called document. Let's change the name of that. Once again, I can hide that disposable shape. I can actually delete that disposable shape if I like. I'm going to the elastic and I'm duplicating that. And then I'll apply the green to it. And despite the fact that I've changed the global colours that formed the swatch I've saved, it doesn't change the original gradient that I saved to the document palette. So applying the green, applying the purple, you can switch between them. So that one needs to be green. Now, something that I have done is I've created a document palette containing ranges of colours for elastic. So there is a sort of black grey one. There's a purpley one. I had a light blue, a dark blue, red, a bit garish, orange. I did create a green. Oh, and my favourite, purple and silver. <laughs> my school uniform. Not even joking, sadly. Oh, it was hideous. Right. Now for a quick bonus. You don't need to leave that looking like that. Most planners with a band do tend to have it over on the right hand edge, but it doesn't have to stay that way. So working with this one that I've got here, I'm going to flip that round, holding the shift key down. So I'm rotating it 90 degrees, uh, moving it across and sizing it correctly. And now the band is going around it like a traveler's journal. We don't even have to stop there. We can go full skeuomorphic realism by adding a pen. So I'm going to move that up because what I want is for the pen to hang off this. Now I do have a pen. Now this was a free stock image from FreePick. Link is in the description below and I've saved it as an Affinity Designer file. What I need to do now is open up the artboard in Affinity Designer. There is the complete pen and that is what I'm going to copy and back in Affinity Publisher, paste it in. Right, moving it in place. So we'll have it over on the right hand edge. Not bad, but it just looks like it sat on top of it. Now, within the completed pen group, I've created two subgroups. One is the actual pen itself. The second is the clip. And what I need is for the elastic to be over the pen, but under the clip. Easiest way to do that is to grab the elastic layer and drag it between the two. Not bad, but not perfect. It needs to look like it's blending in better. And the easiest way to do that is to take the clip and the pen and add an effect to it, which is an outer shadow which will give it some depth. So let's have a play around with the value of that. I reckon 28 and close it. And what that does is give it a little bit of depth. So let's have a look around the nib. It's dropping a shadow on the cover itself. And as we move up here, you can see that the colours within the clip are slightly darker because of the shadow that's supplied. 
And that is how you can create elastic look textures and add realism to your digital planners. So let's have a quick recap. You need to create a gradient. Mine had 17 points. That's up to you. It can have as many or as few as you like. Then I added that gradient to a colour palette for easy reuse. I added a shape to represent the elastic and applied the gradient horizontally from left to right. You can create an alternative look by rotating the elastic and optionally add a pen. Separate the clip and place the clip over the elastic and then add an outer shadow for more realism. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.